When you're president, Putin invades Ukraine, you would sit back, not give any armaments and let him roll in. Here's what I would do. I would actually be proactive in doing a deal. And I've been very clear about the deal I would do. Trump has said he would do a deal in 24 hours. He hasn't said what it was. I, I, I believe there's a deal to be done, but I also believe it's important to be clear about what the contours of that deal would be. I would freeze the current line. Let's take the status quo right now. It, it, so I can answer your question or I could answer starting from the present. If you don't, I, we could do I, both. I, could start I mean, the, the obvious, yeah. the obvious is maybe put NATO, take NATO off the table and avoid the whole thing. But now we're yeah, playing that, that's what I would have said. Yeah, we're playing yeah, alternative history. So maybe it's better to yeah, talk about so what's happening start now. From the present, right? Because yeah. I don't think that we would have, if I was president, I don't think we would have gotten to the point of those th things rolling in. Angela Merkel made some disastrous comments. Putin made a hard demand. We would have said hard no to Ukraine joining NATO, and that would have been that. There would have been no tanks rolling. And Putin may in. have still, maybe if he took NATO off the table, Putin may have still invaded. We don't know. I, I don't I don't think so, but we can't, you know, those are counterfactuals that we can, exactly. you know, yeah. we're not going to have one side or the other being able to, to, to prove that, right? So let's talk about the present. Right now, let's say I'm U.S. president. I would freeze the current lines of control. We have a precedent for doing this, the Korean War, Korean War style armistice. That does give Putin most of the Donbass region. That's beyond the pale of what many are willing to accept in either party. But I think any deal, someone has to win. Everyone has to win something out of the deal. I would further then give that assurance that NATO will not admit Ukraine to NATO. But there's a requirement in return. The biggest requirement is that Russia has to exit its military partnership with China. There's a 2001 treaty. It's called the Treaty of Good Neighborliness and Cooperation military cooperation between the two countries, that Xi Jinping and Putin ratcheted up to the so-called strategic no limits partnership in 2022. That is why China is now coming, by the way, to Russia's aid. I personally believe we are absolutely sending Putin into Xi Jinping's arms in a way that's a mistake. I would also require that Putin remove his nuclear weapons from Kaliningrad, that we take any Russian military presence in the US in the Western Hemisphere off the table. Venezuela, Cuba, Nicaragua. I think this is a deal that Putin would do if we paired it with reopening economic relations with Russia, which I would do. Because I think Putin does not, and I can give you some evidence for this, but I think Putin does not enjoy being Xi Jinping's little brother. And so I think that this is actually an opportunity. And I have to confess, I am a guy who sees our foreign policy prism through the prism of believing that China is the top long run threat that we face. And so most of my foreign policy views and national security views, even on topics that are apparently unrelated to China, I still see it through that prism. But this one isn't a far leap because China is literally in a military treaty with Russia and coming to their aid. I would use the Ukraine war and an end to the Ukraine war as a way to bifurcate the Russia-China relationship and, and divide, basically dissolve that relationship. And then actually, that's our best way and most effective step towards deterring Xi Jinping from going after Taiwan, because right now Xi Jinping, you know, I think that there's a mistaken consensus view that the way he thinks about it is, oh, reason by analogy rather than by actual analyzing of a situation, say, oh, well, he got that piece of land, maybe I can go get this island. I don't think he reasons by analogy. I think he reasons by the cards he has in terms of hard power. So his bet is that the US won't want to go to war with two different allied nuclear superpowers at the same time. But if Russia is no longer in his camp, then Xi Jinping is going to have to think twice about going after Taiwan. So then I it's guess part of the, my broader Taiwan yeah, deterrence The obvious follow-up question there is, you wouldn't defend Ukraine. Would you have America and the allies defend Taiwan if it was invaded? I would, at least until the U.S. has achieved semiconductor independence. So you would and defend Taiwan. Thing to, yeah. Because we depend on them for our modern way of life in a way that we don't on Ukraine. And and in the, in the latter part of this is it sounds a little crass to some people, but I believe in being honest. I actually think that yeah, I'll get to the I'll get to this point in a second. But to answer your question, yes, until we've achieved semiconductor independence, 